Today, we're lucky to have a college professor to share his experiences in doing online teaching and learning. Dr. Mohika, can you tell us something about yourself and what do you teach? Hi, I'm Elmer Mohika uh, of Pace University here in New York City, teaching uh, chemistry college courses. What was your and your students' reactions when you learned that you will do remote learning and what did you do? When the university decides to go to on remote learning by March, the first thing that I did is to ask my students how we're going to do the remote learning. Because for me, I say face-to-face uh, -face is much better than uh, remote learning or online education. We, uh, I was not trained to do online training, uh, online uh, learning, and I think the students didn't sign up for online learning. So my main problem is I teach both lecture and lab laboratory courses. So I think the transition is much easier in the lecture courses compared to the lab courses. And when I shifted to remote learning, there's a, a distinction that I did in interacting with students. There's a synchronous meeting and the asynchronous activity. How did you manage synchronous or live teaching? And how did you make it possible? Now, there are two main uh, programs that they use for synchronous teaching. One is Zoom that's provided by the school. When I use Zoom, I usually use it for socialization and also for students who have been with me uh, more than one semester because there's more interaction uh, in Zoom compared to the other one that I'm using. So in Zoom, uh, usually it's just like we are in the classroom. Now, the other one and the main focus that I use is uh, what we call Blackboard Collaborate. I choose Blackboard Collaborate even before we do the remote learning because this are the depository of my teaching materials. I have my PowerPoint slides here, problem sets, and assignment that the students uh, like to work on. Now, when there's a transition in uh, remote learning, it's much easier for me to at least use this Blackboard Collaborate as a means to keep in touch with my students. So the, the good thing uh, about Blackboard Collaborate compared to Zoom, so if, uh, if I'm doing my presentation here, the students can interact, they can write on the board with me. What hardware or devices did you purchase to make teaching chemistry possible? The first thing I did is to buy a pad like this one for writing because I, I, I want the way to teach them uh, is spontaneously like solving problems during class. And in addition to that, I also invest on this microphone to prepare the so-called uh, recorded le lecture slides. So the way I try to do this thing, I put some questions there and then I record them like this one. So the way I, I, I try to put it there. So in this problem, I was just there. What is the formula mass of the ammonia? So in this problem, I was able to write this thing here. So it's easy for me to teach them. It's just like we are having class uh, on a face-to-face -face, uh, basis. What are the challenges you faced and how did you facilitate, especially the lab experiences? The challenging part is the laboratory because laboratory, laboratory classes, I think, should be experienced. It's hard to teach techniques virtually, okay? Although there are commercial packages that show you how a technique is be done, you cannot have the same skills that you have when you do titration uh, by yourself than titration by, by, by the click of the mask. So the best... Uh, possible means that we uh, that uh, we incorporated okay is by use of these so-called videos so what i do in every experiments that i have i posted links that students can watch to see the experiment all about so for instance uh, this one here so there's there's a link that given here on how the experiment is going to be performed and the students just have to watch them okay and it's just make them feel that they have a lab. And in addition to that, I also recorded there, the one that I have told you before, uh, recorded lecture slide. So in each experiment that they perform, I ask them to watch, okay? 
what the experiment is all about okay so each experiment says here so as you could see here there's an experiment like recorded lecture and then there's the video links of the experiment that they're supposed to do in the lab class what were the mistakes that you experienced during the process and what should we remember before doing online teaching now some of the common mistakes that i have especially during uh, blackboard collaborate and zoom meeting is when i turn up the audio i always forget to turn in or turn it on back okay one time i realized i finished discussing the thing and none of the uh, students are uh, saying anything another problem that i can see here is how the students buy on it many times when i have this blackboard collaborate session i found most of them sleeping so maybe that's the reason when we use the zoom some of them don't want to show themselves uh, in the video they, they, they try to hide their video because most of them they just turn it on and then they don't even listen for college students what do you think will make online learning more effective so i think the students should buy it should buy the concept that there's no other option at this time of pandemic why we're doing this uh, remote learning okay but face to face i would say it's a much better experience for them compared to this remote learning so dr mohika for your final statement please give me your honest opinion based on your experiences um do you like remote learning remote teaching is it less stress for you as a professor and on my part as a teacher i think uh, i find more uh, stress in teaching online learning compared to face to face because there's a lot of preparation that can be that i need to do compared to a face to face class so that's it another valuable experiences shared by one of the best professors here in new york watch out for more episodes be sure you subscribe and like the videos see ya